All right, back again with another nursery update. Let's get it going. So last time uh, we finished the bead filter, we got all that set up, that's doing well right now. So we're gonna come in here, we got a few more things to do um, before we move on. So let's get in here and go ahead and check and see how the fish are doing. Absolutely beautiful. All this noise, man, we gotta cut it off. Hold on, let me cut it off real quick. Cut it off, you guys see bagging. This is what I wanna see. I wanna see some bagging. Fish are begging for some feed. You see them begging. So this is what we wanna see. This is a good sign here. So it's been a few days. Um, a quick update. Let me see what anything has happened. I haven't been out here vlogging. Anything has happened? No, nothing, <laughs> nothing exciting has happened. So uh, we're gonna get these guys some feed in here right now. We're gonna test the water quality. Oh, that is one thing. We do have nitrites and we have nitrates in the system. This system cycled extremely fast. So we're gonna test that right now. All right, so we got our test. Let's bring it up first. We got ammonia. And we do have some ammonia in here. This is like, is at 0.25 parts per million. Um, so we have some of that in the system. Uh, now we have our nitrites. And our nitrites are very high. You can see these look like they're around uh, one part per million. It's not very high, but it's high enough. And this is not what we want here. We don't want this here. And then also we have nitrates. Look like they're about 20 parts per million. Now this is fine. So we're concerned really about the nitrites and the ammonia. We're really concerned, even though the ammonia is low right now, um, I can run a test to check out the actual um, amount of toxicity that is in this ammonia because this is only telling me the total ammonia nitrogen. That's ammonia and ammonium. But really, the one that is um, uh, toxic to the, um, the, uh, the fish is the ammonia. So we need to know how much unionized ammonia is in here to find out the lethality of this. But what we're gonna do is, so I'll run that and I'll keep these in my notes. I'll put this down and I'll write these in my notes so I'll know exactly what's going on. Because of this, I really wanna do a water change right now. Now, what you guys would do, if you run into this type of situation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna you're gonna do a water change, and if you don't have the time to monitor your system or whatever, then you're gonna stop feeding. You'll you'll, um, you'll stop feeding. You'll do a water change. Uh, let these uh, uh, nitrite oxidizing bacteria begin converting it more over to the nitrate, um, and then uh, you'll after a while, then you begin uh, releasing your feed back into the system. But you know, I'm on the go right now. I'm on the go. So I, I'm trying to get these fish from this system over to the other one. So I don't want to stop feeding. I'm, I'm here to monitor. So I'm going to be doing water changes um, so I can keep this system rolling. All right. So we want to bring this down here um, and uh, then that'll be fine. So this system is cycling very, very fast. It's very, very fast right now. It's only day nine. I mean, and we have... And this came up probably on day six. Like this is a this is like an unusual situation, um, and I probably have to check to see how it cycles so fast because this is very unusual. It's really not typical to have everything within like five days, unless you have like a preceded system. And this system here was not preceded with any bacteria or any nitrifying bacteria or anything like that. So, with that being said, we're gonna do a water change, and get this cleared up, get the fish safe, so nobody bites the dust. Okay, so while we're doing our water change, I'm gonna go ahead and feed these guys real quick. So I'm gonna turn this regenerative blower back on. It's gonna be making some noise, but that's just the law of the land, all right? So turn this back on, and we're gonna get, get to feeding. So I've already measured out um, their feed already in here. It's already measured out, it's about 17 grams. We'll feed these guys. Watch them eat, watch the beast eat. Feed that to them slowly. That's tank one. Come over here to tank two. Feed the beast. Feed the beast. And once again, like I said, this is not what you're gonna be doing. I don't wanna see you guys doing this, especially if you're new, you're just starting out. You're not gonna be cycling, having nitrites and ammonia in your system, um, and you're still feeding um, at a high rate. You're gonna stop feeding you're gonna go ahead and do a water change and you're gonna get your system 
um, uh, in the correct parameters before you continue to put any more feed in there. Now, you can do this, you know, once you get some experience, once you've been through, you know, enough cycles and you know what to expect, then you can do something like this. But I don't want to see you guys out there doing it because you will kill your fish quickly, especially a lot of you guys that, a lot of you guys that are uh, working and stuff and you're not, and you can't, um, you, you know, you're not there to always monitor your system, then you're going to have problems. You're going to have some fish deaths. So, you know, that this is something that I don't recommend doing for those that are beginning, all right? Let's clear that up real quick. All right, we'll come back and we'll check on this in a little bit. Now, what I want to do is we need to move over to the main system right now. So in this nursery setup here, we have approximately, you know, anywhere between four and six weeks left before we transfer those fish over to the main system here. So this is a different production and we're going to move them over to this other system here. But what I want to do is I want to, the logistical side of it, I want to make sure that this system here is cycled before these fish even make it over here. So we want to start that right now. So we have about a four to six week window and that'll give us enough time to come in here and, um, and to turn this system on and get it cycled. Put some ammonia in here. We're going to do a fishless cycle on this one. A fish to cycle in here, or should we throw King Kong in here and let him cycle it? Ah, uh, no, I'm just playing. We'll just do a fish to cycle in here. Fish to cycle, get this up and running. I haven't started this thing in. Woo! It's been a while. I haven't started in a while, so we'll plug it up and uh, get it going. All right, I had to make me a quick stop at Home Depot. I had to get an extra extension cord. Um, so we're gonna get ready to fire this up. But first, you see the water level here has been evaporating. It's been in here for a while, so I want to add some more water in here. Um, before we get going so we'll get to that right now and also yeah the tanks over here they're dry you know bugs have been congregating all in here so you know you got some algae build up over here as well a dead spider right there he, he's bit the dust all type of bugs in here so we're gonna get all this stuff filtered out but I gotta add some more water in here okay before we go back and figure that out let's check the water real quick and right now uh, we should have less nitrite and uh, less ammonia so let's check that out real quick and see what the test look like okay so here we go we got our ammonia our total ammonia nitrogen that's now at zero parts per million nothing in there hopefully you guys can see that nothing in there so this is pretty much zero parts per million or maybe it could be between zero parts per million and 0.25 parts per million either one okay that's cool all right, and then from there, we'll keep that right here. And then now we have our nitrite. And this is now at zero parts per million. We did our water change, and this is now at zero parts per million, so this is not something we have to worry about. Now, since I'm doing the feeding, you know, at the regular rates, I'm gonna have to do this, or I have been doing this pretty much every day. Gotta come out here and change the water because we don't want, you know, uh, sustained levels of uh, nitrite, you know, one part per million, two parts per million and above. We don't want that uh, because that begins to uh, lower the uh, oxygen carrying capacity um, in the fish's blood. So nitrite is something we want to avoid. Ammonia as well. We want to avoid that as well. So it's going to take a few more weeks, maybe another uh, two weeks or so uh, for this to be completely cycled and for the bacteria to colonize enough and to be able to um, process the ammonia uh, that's coming into the um, system at a fast enough rate so we don't have to do water changes. Um, I'm still going to have to do water changes on this system probably because I'm not going to be hooking this up completely as an aquaponic system. So the nitrates, this is what's going to build up. We won't be having problems with ammonia and nitrite, but nitrates, they're going to be accumulating. So we're going to have to uh, find a way to deal with these. Boom. Let's go back outside. Let's cut this blower back on. Get these guys situated again. Cut this blower back on and get to, uh, and tell these and tuck these guys in for the night. Get this thing filled up, and then uh, we'll end up turning on the pump in just a few minutes. Okay, the night time has cometh upon us, and we got this sump tank is pretty much finished. The system is pretty much finished um, filling up now. It's just now um, getting all the way filled up. You can see in here. Hopefully, you guys can see. You look at the solids just being removed. All that. Debris that's been on the bottom since I haven't had this thing on, it's now just getting sucked up from the bottom. So, this is kind of how these bottom drains work. Over here as well, you can see the small 
uh, or the solids that are getting sucked up in there. And then they're returning back over here to get filtered out through this bead filter. So right now what I want to do is I want to test the ammonia level in here um, to make sure that we have some ammonia in here and to make sure that it's getting cycled properly. I stuck some in there um, a few days ago, but I didn't have it turned on. I just grabbed the cap and um, just put some in there. So I'm going to test it right now and check to see um, if that uh, was enough to raise up the level. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so here we are right here. Put some light on this, man, so you guys can see. So it looks like this system here, from what I have put in there, it looks like we have about uh, 0.5 parts per million, which is fine. So each day I'll come out here, add some in here um, to make sure that it um, that the bacteria can colonize enough to handle the load once we put those other fish inside of the system. It'll be properly prepared and all the way uh, uh, fully ready to accept uh, the ammonia production coming from those fish. So this looking this is looking pretty good right now, um, and uh, I'll keep you guys updated on this. And another thing, if I did a video already on uh, doing a fishless cycle. You guys can check that out if you want to know more about it. I already did a video on that, so uh, just go ahead and check that out. All right, so real quick before we get out of here for the night. So what you would typically do is in the building phase, the way to help you guys out a little bit more is typically what you would want to do is you want to build your nursery set up first. Get that going, get it established, get your fingerlings in there, get those growing. I mean, you got a process. If you get them from fingerlings, it's going to take you about four months um, in order before they're big enough to get put into the main system out here. So while you're raising your fingerlings and, you're, uh, and, you got the, and you get your nursery set up and you have your fingerlings going in there, then you would come out here and start building, you know, your main system. Then you come out here and start building this. And then once you know, the three or the four months passes, if you're doing tilapia, you know, if you once your four months passes and then you're ready to move those fish from the nursery setup to out here, you will already have, um, you would have been building on this system here and you would have had it cycled afterwards. But you'll be doing it while the nursery is already uh, put together and while that's going. Hopefully you guys understand that. So um, the reason why we did it the other way is because I had the hoop house behind here. I was going to use that initially as the nursery set up so that was already set up but then I changed my mind and I said you know what I'm not gonna use that set up there I'm gonna move it and put it to the shed so that's why we're kind of a little flip floppy right now but it's still working out perfectly fine because you know we still got time for the fish to raise the fish and uh, to move them over here and you know it's not it's not too big of a deal but if you guys are building it and starting out right now I would build the nursery set up first get it going come out work on your main setup if you guys are going to do different phases, which you should be doing, um, if you got enough space, and um, and then work on this setting, uh, this setup here. As soon as they're finished, they got about another four to six weeks. Then boom, this system here is going to be cycled, ready to move over here. And then from there, you got the production rolling and rolling and ongoing. So hopefully that helps out. Right now is the end of the night. Um, this is once us. I'm pretty much done right now. It's just hanging on to the last limb before it cuts off um, and that's going to be the end for this.